Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Views for Build. So in the last episode, we got the first half of the engine mount done, we got the transmission mount done. Enough mounting so far that it is mounted, but it's not mounted strong enough. So we're gonna build, in today's episode, we're gonna build the second half of that. We're also gonna do some reinforcement so it can handle that whole thousand horsepower package that we're throwing at it. Then we also just have a ton of parts I can't wait to show you guys. We've got ECU parts from Haltech, we've got fuel parts from Deechworks, we've got all sorts of really cool stuff that I wanna show you. And then finally, it's time for me to jump into what's left of the brains and the electronics of the Huracan. The Huracan's mind is still there and we really need it for some different things that I would really like to have, but I'm really not sure how much of it's gonna still survive by the end of this. So it's my job today to start troubleshooting on that and start figuring out what we got left. Should be fun, stay tuned. First off, before I jump into talking about the parts, I just wanna say I did film this episode kind of jumping around a lot, but I'm gonna kind of reorganize it all so it makes uh, sense from a project to project basis, but all the time might not add up. So getting started, like I just wanna show you guys all of the new stuff that we have. There's so many comments and so many things that I wanna address about kind of parts and plans moving forward. I figured let's just jump through them real quick and I'll show you around. So first off, you probably noticed the giant Lamborghini box. Automobili Lamborghini. Unfortunately, this is basically the least exciting thing that you could get in a beautiful Lamborghini box like this. This is the spider window. So the door that we have uh, was from a coupe in the green car and uh, we needed a convertible window, so that's what that is and then that gets us the glass for this one when we get our door now we have the right glass which we're going to take out of the green one that's over there so cool box though next up we ordered some uh, custom suspension stuff so um, this is all suspension stuff that we bought uh, off ebay off of a, a wrecked huracan because all of our rears are toast you can see them over there they're, they're destroyed so this is uh this is what we need these are the uppers and those are the lowers but unfortunately they forgot to send the ball joints to go in the uppers they didn't know that we needed them so those are in the mail they're going to be behind by a few days but we'll have them very soon and those are part of the tie rods for the rear. So then we'll be able to install our springs, which I'm gonna show you now, our struts, and then they're coilovers, Jesus, Chris, I got this. Um, and then we'll put our, our new control arms on and we'll be able to actually throw the car down on all fours. So this setup is pretty cool. This is our uh, this is our rear suspension. I, I went away from the stock Lamborghini because I figured we want adjustable ride height in the rear just in case because we have a heavier engine than before with the iron block and everything else like that. So these are pretty good uh, coilovers and these uh, and these springs are at a spring rate that I can't remember what spring rate I ordered, but I did all the math of like what the expected weight of the Huracan is going to be front and rear and blah 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 and got springs that were good enough for that. So these are also set to a certain size they need to be built to the the right height which i believe they are so we got to assemble these later on spring goes on the coil over and you coil it down and everything like that and then that will replace these right here and we're going to go from here to here which is uh it's pretty cool if we get that figured out those are about like 400 bucks a spring versus a two thousand dollar per side coil over i think they're two thousand a piece it might be two thousand for the pair i'm not really sure to buy new lamborghini rears the Lamborghini ones though, I do think are adaptive. I see some wires coming out of here. I think that these can kind of change how they react based on um, driving mode. So that's one thing that would be lost if somebody was like a Lamborghini owner and actually gonna swap out their rears to lower their car or something like that, you would lose that. Um, but these have all of that stuff based on valving. So you can change the valving right here and that would make it stiffer or softer ride. Next thing that I already unboxed is our Holly alternator. So we got this super sexy LS alternator. It sucks, it kind of shipped with this smudge. So Holly, you owe me one unsmudging. But uh, yeah, this is our alternator. It's upgraded and it's all got, it's got all sorts of good stuff. Plus it's black, so it'll look better. I still haven't picked out an aftermarket AC compressor, so if anybody's got good ideas for that, I need to buy one of those. Moving on to the Willwood boxes, there's some fun stuff in here. So as you guys know, Huracans don't come in manuals, but ours is gonna be a manual. So we have to get a clutch uh, pedal and then we have a clutch master cylinder. So this is pretty cool. It's got all this stuff so you can do a remote reservoir. This would be like if you wanted to remote mount this somewhere else, um, you can run these two adapter things and run it to a remote. This is the uh, hydraulic part of the clutch. So this obviously is gonna go inside the car, pedals right there. And then as you push down on that, it pushes down on this hydraulic cylinder and then, you know, that goes towards the transmission. And then you fill this thing with fluid. So this mounts over here 
and you can see that we're, we're really tight for space, but I do think we're gonna be able to make it work somewhere around here. But as you can see, it does get tight with once this thing is flush up against the firewall, we are gonna have issues with the cap and we'll figure out a creative way to solve that. Overall building this clutch pedal, it's gotta be right. We have to land it in the exact right spot or else it's just gonna feel weird, but it also just won't fit if we don't. So I've done some measuring, I've done some looking at it and uh, I think we're gonna be able to pull it off, but man, is it gonna be tight. Coming over to here, I'm gonna show you why the whole timeline thing is a little weird. Um, this is a couple different things. So we have some uh, some fittings from Jegs. This is AN fittings. We have our new upgraded oil pan. This is a Moroso oil pan. This is the one that Cletus runs on his uh, drag cars his two cars, uh, Ruby and Leroy. They both have this oil pan, so I figured it was good for what we're doing. So I picked up that oil pan and we will show you later how we installed it, but it's installed right now because we had to um, gain ourselves the clearance that we need so we could build our, um, what is this? The center support thing. So you're gonna see all this built a little bit later in the episode. But yeah, that's our Moroso oil pan. I thought it was aluminum, it's actually steel. That doesn't really matter though, cause it's gonna, steel is just even easier for us to modify, weld, change, etc., etc. So you got the oil pan, it comes with a new pickup and everything like that. And then, uh, if you guys remember, we talked about the whole water pump and how water pumps on the front front of an engine, they kind of take up a lot of space, right? So this is a remote mount, remote electric water pump mount kit. So this uh, bolts onto the front of the block, bunch of AN fittings to run water lines from there. But what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna get some 90 degree AN fittings and run them um, a different direction. So it's gonna go straight out of here, straight down. And then in here is, let me open this up. Here is our electric water pump. So this, this guy will be turned on as soon as the car reaches operating temperature, this thing will be turned on and it will flow the fluid through um, and then through these fittings, which will send it through the blocks. This will probably be mounted up front in the, uh, in the newly rebuilt frunk section. In this box, Motul sent us a bunch of awesome banners and some watches and shirts and stuff like that. So you'll be seeing us wear those and then uh, we're working on flattening our banner out over there and we're gonna hang it right above the BS for Bill. A lot of you guys have been talking about SEMA. I'm glad you guys are hyped at SEMA. We are going to be in the Motul booth at SEMA. That's where you can find us. Come say hi. We're gonna do a meet and greet, signing, all that great stuff. Holy moly, did Deechworks send us a ton of stuff. This is the entire fuel system for the whole build. A lot of you guys asked why we went through the hassle of buying a second engine that can actually function to do the mock-up and stuff like that. It's because we actually kind of want to mock start it too and run fuel to it. So we're going to be able to do that pretty soon. And that's all through all this amazing stuff here in this D-Schwartz box. We got, you know, fuel pressure regulators, a gajillion different AN fittings to run through everything, fuel filters, fuel pumps are actually in that box, fuel pumps, um, all of our fuel lines, everything fuel related is within that box. They all, they sent it all to us already. So that is awesome. And we're going to be able to get started on that really soon. And obviously Deechworks is our sponsor for our fuel system on this build. So I'll put a link in the description. Uh, if you like the way this sexy packaging looks and you need some of this goodness, you'll know where to get it. If you need oil, the Motul link will be in the description as well. Sponsors getting some love. Company that's not a sponsor, but I want to be a sponsor because we need to buy a gajillion things from them, Fiberglass. So Fiberglass is the company where we got our, uh, where we're starting to get our carbon fiber supplies from and our fiberglass and all that good stuff since we gotta, you know, do that for a couple months to build an entire Lamborghini body. That is fiberglass reinforcement tape, carbon fiber fun stuff, um, some crazy nylon stuff. It's just cool stuff that um, f carbon fiber composite professionals have told me I should probably pick up. I got that and then we have a whole starter kit that I think we already showed you like, there's some of the other stuff around there. Moving on to another sponsor that has just totally hooked us up. Check this out. This is the Haltech package. This is our Elite 2500 with the Gen 3 LS engine loom. So all of our wiring lives right here. We have our ECU in there and all the other stuff that we need. This is in case we need to change for um, the injector, injector pins. Uh, and we also have a boost controller in there too, which will be controlled by our Haltech Elite 2500. So this is really cool because it means we actually get to started, get to get started pretty quickly here on wiring up our entire Haltech system to power the LS. So huge thanks to them. And again, link is in the description. If you guys want good, affordable ECU stuff, they are a great company to, to uh, check out. This is a box of exhaust that I ordered and I found out that we're actually not going to use it. It's kind of funny because LS engine turbo exhaust, when you buy turbo exhaust, it makes the exhaust go the opposite way and shoot forwards. 
So I was like, yeah, that's what we need. But then I forgot that we're putting the engine backwards. So now I have the exhaust that actually goes that way instead of exhaust that goes that way. We could probably flip it around, but the idea is actually we're not gonna have exhaust that goes that way or that way. We're gonna build one that comes up, like basically straight up from here. And then we can mount turbos here hanging out the rear hatch. That's what I would love to see. And that is not it though. You can see we got our first package with the awesome TSP branding on it. Texas Speed, our engine sponsor, America. Kyle, we're ready to go to the pool. We got our bags. <laughs> I actually haven't opened this package at all yet. We got some awesome shirts and lanyards and koozies. I'll put a beer in one of those immediately just for Texas Speed. Let me unbox this baby. This is our Texas Speed intake manifold. This thing is so freaking beastly. You can see all the billeting. These are all billet aluminum parts. I mean, it looks like I'm not a professional. Uh, I'm sure there's O-rings inside this kit that we're gonna lay down on all of that. Um, and they actually tested for us to make sure that we can mount it backwards, which is awesome. And then you can see we have our fuel rails here that are gonna hold our injectors uh, and do the magical kind of squirt, squirt, air, air, bang, bang action. That thing is a lot bigger than I had imagined, but I'm sure we'll have room. So we have to buy a throttle body for this guy and then we'll be able to, uh, we're gonna get a drive-by wire because all the junkyard ones that we have right here are all drive-by, they're all drive-by cable, I believe. Yeah, you know, when you go for big power, you need a lot of air, so you have a massive throttle body, so you can just tell visually the size is so much different. So yeah, we gotta get one that fits this, and then, uh, but we don't really need one for the whole, well, we kinda need one for the test fitting. I can cover it with my hand. So yeah, I'll have to get a throttle body for this thing sent out ASAP. And then what we'll actually be able to do is put this on the mock-up engine with our, once we have our Haltech system plumbed to run the electronics for it, and we have our Deechworks fuel system run to our Deechworks injectors coming off of this fuel rail right here. Um, and then we'll have the throttle body, which will be actuated by the Haltech, and we could actually test fire this baby up and hear it purr. It's not gonna purr very well. They said this engine will probably blow up in the first thousand miles, but you know what I mean. Might make more popping sounds and purring sounds, but you guys get it. So that's it. That's our new shipment of tons of awesome stuff. And it's, you know, obviously not the end of the stuff, but uh, yeah, you've seen it now. It's all unboxed. Now we're going to store it away and get everything cleaned up. And we're going to jump over into the front electronics. Got to try and bring this thing back to life. Getting started unraveling this whole mystery. Uh, it's pretty clear we're, we're missing we're missing a lot of stuff and it's gonna make it really tricky. I do have wiring diagrams now, which is great, out of an Audi R8, which is very, very similar, I think. And uh, and we have another Huracan to go look at. So let's go look at that. We're gonna tear some stuff down, get it out of the way so we can kind of like further open up the, the root of the electrical, but I'm gonna try and start up here because that's where the battery is, would be. You know what I mean. Well, I thought this was gonna be like terribly confusing and we were never gonna figure out it was gonna take hours, but it actually was was very, very simple. So all I gotta do now is build essentially a, a power distribution. I need to go from a positive lead on the battery over to all those things that bolt up. They all need to bolt into there and then we should be pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna connect up a few more things. We connected up our uh, vacuum pump. This, uh, this provides vacuum to the brake booster and right here we got, we connected up our, um, that's a sensor that makes sure it's got enough vacuum while you're trying to drive around. And uh, I'm gonna also connect up our electronic power steering stuff. So you got a big old ground here, the positive and negative, um, and then a, a little controller as well. That's all gonna get connected. And then this guy goes to our um, ABS unit that probably will never work on this vehicle, but it'd be great if it did. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that connected up now. And then I'm gonna start looking at how to build a nice little power distribution unit Temporary, it's just a temporary thing. Uh, while I'm doing that, Kyle is gonna be jumping inside and he's gonna start deadheading some of these wiring bundles. So we don't wanna send power to the vehicle and have all these wires here crossed over and stuff like that. It's bound to blow a million fuses and that'd be a bad idea. So we need to make sure that those are all deadheaded and not going to short out on each other. All right, 
that was a total pain, but we got it together. So we uh, scrapped some, scrapped together some kind of high gauge wire out of our junk pile from the old Chevy engines. Uh, so we got our, our ground here, running to a grounded point here, and then we got our hot here running to all that. So if you touch this bad boy to here, it's gonna start powering the Lambo, which we are not ready to do yet. So now Kyle and I, like I said we were gonna do earlier, are gonna finally jump in here and start deadheading these wire bundles. And then we also need to uh, find some of our computers and start plugging them in. Our um, body control module that should be kind of operating all of this magic that I really wanna have, it should all run off the body control module and that's totally unplugged right now. We got about like three or four computers back there that need to be plugged in. Kyle did a great job of cleaning this whole thing out and while he was doing that, I was cutting all of these wires. So the next thing that we gotta do is insulate the tips out of each one of these. We're gonna try some spray on electrical tape. I don't think it's gonna work and then we're probably gonna have to clean up our mess and use real electrical tape. While that's drying up, we're gonna start placing our computers. Great success, we got multiple computers installed. We got this one, which we nicknamed Crispy, no idea. This one, fiber optics, the Dopton flonger, and then the body control module. Uh, so now we're gonna grab a bunch of these accessories. We got a ton of different things that plug into things. Steering wheel has controls, dashboard, power button. We're gonna need that if we wanna see the light of day bunch of other things. We're going to unwrap all these things and start to figure out how we can connect them up. All right, it is the moment of truth. So we got everything that we have right now uh, wired in. Start button, a bunch of other things. Unfortunately, we're missing a couple different things that I think are stopping us from really plugging in some stuff. Um, got this big bulk of a harness here and some of this stuff here, and it runs back and it actually matches some of the stuff back here. And one thing we realized, if you guys remember, in my other Huracan, you know, we got a stereo thing back here. We don't have any of that type of like unit with the CD player and the SD card, uh, which I think runs, uh, I think the SD card runs a nav as well, or it does in a lot of these types of cars. Um, and then we didn't have uh, the MMI and navigation panel. So that's just probably an accident um, from when they were trying to get us all the interior pieces. You know, we were in a hustle and bustle. So we're gonna work with um, Exotic Auto Recycling on getting that. Another thing that's kind of weird is we don't have the, the paddle shifter part for the steering wheel right here. We got, they had sold that off of this car so that was like not involved in the deal. We got a really busted up steering wheel that I really just wanted all these controls because a big part of this build is I want to be able to have things like blinkers. So this is the blinkers, um, windshield wipers, that stuff won't matter, this stuff won't matter. But I really wanted to be able to have blinkers and um, with the way that this is, is, it really looks like there's only about a five pin um, connector right there that I'm assuming ran into one of those like swiveling rotating things they hooked up there and also hooked up to some paddle shifty stuff and uh, we don't have that so we got to work on getting that as well but I don't think that's gonna stop us I think this thing's still gonna power on so it is a moment of truth let's give this thing a try now keep in mind we also don't have keys so really if this thing works all we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna turn the power on nothing's gonna explode nothing's gonna catch on fire then I'm gonna hit the power button and it should just tell us what time it is okay so we got the air conditioner and everything off uh, fire extinguishers at the ready boys yes all right I'm gonna add power to the car for the first time we might hear that vacuum pump run a little bit let's see heard nothing nothing's freaked out back here moment of truth give me some dash oh things clicked I heard I heard the body module click hang on Listen. Oh, we have a fiber optic thingy blinking. Hmm. 
Well, when we apply power and we take off power, things are clicking around inside the body control module and uh, something down there. It wants to do stuff, but we're just not really getting any action. So I think a lot of it probably has to do with this big block of wires right here. We're not able to connect it to the other side because we don't have whatever goes there. So I might need to tear apart my other Huracan and kind of see what that is and uh, see how much that matters uh, or else we might not get any, get any signs of life from our old dashboard. You guys aren't gonna believe this. I don't even believe this. I, all I did was I unplugged the dash and I plugged it back in and I, Kyle, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we did anything else. We stared at things. We, we stared at things and we're like, damn, that's gonna be hard. But yo, we got the dash. The dash is here. Our, this, this Huracan, at least the dashboard, only has 3,000 miles. Fancy, we even got that one. Dude, this is fantastic. Shift to park, otherwise you're screwed. This is so good. We didn't even hit, okay, so what happens if we hit power? Well, nothing, but fantastic. So we did we did do so, a lot of research while the car was fixing itself. We did a lot of research and um, and found out where yeah we're missing the stereo module that goes back there. Then that runs up to what's called the MMI, the multimedia entertainment module dealy thing. So that's all there, and and we're gonna need all that to kind of keep this connection flowing. And obviously, you know, we're missing a lot of things like the modules that are in the doors and other things like that. But what I really, really, really wanted to see was whether or not we could get this get the car to this state right here. So it thinks that you know because it, it has no transmission control module, it thinks the car is in neutral and other things like that. So it's just the right amount of pissed off, but it also keep in mind it doesn't have a key So it's not gonna like on my Huracan if you open the door This is basically what it looks like if it was in neutral um, So that leads us to the point of we need we need a key I have an extra Huracan key, but I have no idea how to get it coded to this car if it goes by VIN number or anything else like that. So if anybody knows in the comments, let me know. But um, that is the next thing that we need to do is I think we need to get a key to this thing and then we can continue to kind of like power it on through. But the fact that it's really mad about the transmission, that is, uh, that's questionable because well, we don't have a transmission control module and there's no reason to buy one if it can't plug into a transmission. But that's a, uh, we, uh, we can figure that problem out later. Fantastic. All right, shifting gears from the electrical side of things, Oscar is here and he's getting started on our cross support. So you guys remember the game plan. This goes right down here, connecting in right about there, goes across underneath our oil pan. And then from there, we have another little pad that'll bolt to that and come up to the other engine mount. Oscar's got our cross support piece cut out, but we're getting a little close to the oil pan, a little close for comfort, so we're gonna check out our, our other oil pan. We're gonna measure against it and see how we're looking. So the Moroso oil pan is a lot more shallow right there in the front uh, than the other one is, which gives us a lot more room to run our cross member up a little bit higher. And the higher we can get it up, the closer it'll run flush to the, the other um, engine mount pocket, which I think will be good. So Oscar's gonna do all that magic. So after measuring the Moroso oil pan, it's uh, we definitely need to use it, which means that we actually have to take this one off, which is kind of a bummer. So Oscar's gonna go ahead and do that from the bottom. We're gonna drain the oil, pop the oil pan off, and we're gonna just lightly uh, kind of mock fit the Moroso one back up in there. And then he'll be able to build uh, that cross support out with the engine being in place. Oscar did the very dirty task of installing the uh, Moroso oil pan and you can see that we have good clearance now uh, under there with our cross support. So now Oscar's gonna go ahead and finish trimming up the cross support and get it tacked in there.
Oscar got the cross member uh, welded in and uh, now we are looking at, so we, we cut those plates uh, last time we were working on that and we're, we're looking at how to kind of build the second little piece of the engine mount before we can go ahead and start tack welding that stuff into place and looking at our drilling spots. We're also going to have to take a little bit of the weight off the engine because it is kind of hanging low. So we'll bring the, uh, the tray picker in here, take a little weight off the engine and Oscar's going to keep on fabricating. Oscar just finished up tacking up the uh, the secondary mount here. So you can see it goes right there and he's gonna pull that out and fully weld it up and then start working on, we're gonna, instead of connecting them down low, it doesn't really seem to make much sense. What we're gonna do is square plate both sides of that and then it'll kind of make it into one unit. It's gonna look really good and it's gonna be super strong. A lot of you guys commented about like the galvanetic corrosion of having steel touching aluminum. You guys act like that stuff happens overnight, like they eat through each other. It would take years guys, but that doesn't really matter anyways, because anytime you're building stuff like this you want to have some sort of um, a gasket in between some sort of a bushing that way you don't get like bad squeaking or you don't have the steel just rubbing right through the aluminum so uh, what we're gonna do is you buy a gasket sheet and you cut out the little like a little pad underneath that and put it in there and then that helps kind of uh, reduce squeaking sounds absorption all that good stuff on top of uh, you know eliminating the galvanetic corrosion factor okay so he's gonna fully weld those out and then build those plates All right, that's a wrap. Oscar has finished up our engine mounts. That thing is in there so damn well. It's gonna definitely be able to handle the horsepower that we're throwing at it. I'm super happy with the way that that turned out. So this crossbar obviously clears our oil pan or we wouldn't have built it that way. Cross support's good. We will continue to support the back. We've been talking about different ways to engineer the back, but as it is right now, that is our engine and transmission mounted into the Huracan.
All right, guys, that is a wrap on today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. We got a lot of cool stuff figured out. Obviously, the car power's on now, which is great. We need to get a key, and then it's gonna be even more great. And then we got the engine mounted. And, and we, we unboxed a lot of cool parts. And in the next episode, we will use some of those parts to further this build, I promise you. Guys, hit subscribe. I'm sure you're enjoying this build. I'm enjoying this build. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. And uh, I will see you very soon for the next one.